Now that we can read the basic information stored in the ID card, we would like to use it for authentication. To show a more simple use case and to avoid adding a full user authentication layer to our example application, we will add the possibility to ask for patient consent in the interface. This would be, for instance, to make sure that the patient agrees with the fact that his personal and medical data may be stored in the servers of the medical institution. For patient consent, we want to make sure that we do have the right patient in front of us, so we want the patient to enter their PIN code and authenticate themselves. In the interface, we added a patient consent button, as well as a checkbox, which will be checked if and only if the patient enters their PIN code into the system with their ID card. In the dependencies of our project, we need to add another module from the Commons EID library, the GCA for Java Cryptography Architecture. The GCA will allow us to access the certificates and keys of the electronic ID card. In the Create Patient form, we added the button and the checkbox to the interface. In the Constructor, we check if there is a card inserted in the system. If there is, we enable the Patient Consent button. When the user clicks on the Patient Consent button, we first check that the person form has been filled in and that the national number is not null. This is because we will use that information to check that the information obtained from the form corresponds to the EID card. Once we have made sure that there is something to check, we use our BID class to authenticate the person. If the authentication works, we check the patient consent box. If not, we uncheck it and we set the color of the button to red to show the user that something went wrong. Once again, the core of the code happens in the BID class to the new authenticate method. Let's go through this method line by line to understand what's happening. First, we read the card. From the card, we read the identity information and from that we extract the national number. We check that this national number corresponds to the person that we are trying to authenticate. We then move on to the certificates and the crypt cryptographic part of the verification. This code is directly adapted from the Commons EID documentation. First, we have to register the security provider from Commons EID, which will perform the necessary operations to read the certificates and use the private keys on the card. We then have to create an instance of a key store object, which will give us access to the certificates and keys. We create an instance of the private key object, which will contain the authentication private key of the card. Note that this only prepares the class for reading the key, but the key itself remains on the card and at this point has not been unlocked. Authentication is done by signing a challenge and verifying the signature. We therefore have to generate a random challenge. We use a random generator from Java to generate a 64 bytes challenge. We then choose the algorithm that we will use for the signature and prepare the signature by referencing the private key location and the challenge. It's only once all of this has been done that we can sign the challenge. It's only then that the signature class will attempt to access the private key. Because the private key is protected, a pop-up will appear asking for the PIN code. The PIN code and the challenge are then sent to the card which will send back the signature. We now have to verify that the signature is correct. To do that, we first need to access the authentication certificate, which contains the public key that is linked with the private key used to sign the challenge. We once again use the signature class with the same algorithm as before, and this time prepare it for verification by giving it the certificate and the challenge. Note that the verification part does not need access to the private key and therefore will not ask for the PIN code. Once the signature class has the challenge and the certificate, it can verify that the signature corresponds to the challenge and was made with the expected private key, proving that the patient is the owner of the card. 
Let's now see this in action. We have already inserted a patient with this EID, so now we'll use the edit button to get the form which is already filled. When we click on the patient consent button, we get a pop-up asking for the PIN code. Once we enter the PIN code, we unlock the authentication private key of the card and we verify that the challenge is correctly signed. If the PIN code is correct, the checkbox is changed to show that the patient has given consent for the usage of their personal data. This information could then be recorded into the database. 